Hey, it's Carrie at Studio R12 Stencils, and today we're going to show you how to paint a faux wood grain effect on an MDF surface. I recently painted this project as an example of how to use our layered trees to paint a forest. If you want to see how to do that, watch the video that I'll link above on this amazing, if I say so myself, winter wonderland project. You'll learn how to layer stencils, how to choose the colors for your trees, and a couple of different ways to paint snow. But when I was working on that project and I painted this one, we got some requests on showing you how to paint this background. It's a lot easier than what I think you're going to expect. So let's dive into it. I have a round surface and I intentionally grabbed a round surface because we're going to be doing a lot of brush strokes and on a round, it can be a little more difficult to keep them straight. So I have some tips for that. I also have some tips for choosing your foam brushes for these projects. So if you're looking to paint a really rustic antiqued background, you're going to want to put away all of your really beautiful new poly foam brushes. So I grabbed a few out of our bin and this one is new and it's really soft and it would have been the first one I chose just to paint a regular background, but I don't want it for this project. These two are also pretty soft. They're going to the side. The ones I'm keeping are the ones that are dirty, the ones that are rough on the edge, and the ones that have seen a little bit of love and wear and tear over the years. These are the ones that I love to use when I want a really streaky background. It's really beneficial when you're painting a project like this because the rougher edges are going to prevent the paint from really seeping in and they're going to set on the toe of that and it helps make a streaky effect. So the colors that I'm going to start with for this project are a number 22, which is a cream, a number 31 are brown, and then I have a couple of different stains. If I can find the stain colors for this, I will put them in the description below. These are some old ones that we had on hand that I just grabbed as I was starting this project. So when we're talking about colors, you're going to want to grab our Studio R12 paint color guide. When I say I'm using a number 31, you can go to the paint color guide. You can find the number 31 and it's gonna be in a honey bottle, just like our colors. And then it has a deco art color, a Sherwin-Williams color, the hex code if you're doing things online. We love deco art, we use deco art for decades and still do, but we paint in bulk. So we use Sherwin-Williams house paint. So if you are painting in bulk, if you are painting to sell, if you are painting tall porch signs, you might want to buy some of your colors in bulk and that's where these numbers will come in handy. Often in our videos, you're going to hear us say that stenciling is a layers game. Well, for this background, it is also a layers game. I have a mix of stains and a mix of paints that will give us a lot of depth in our project. And then I have all of them put out on my palette paper. We have found that using a piece of mylar is a great way to make a palette. You can clean it off just like you clean your stencils. We have a video for that and you can use it over and over and over again. Love, love, love it. So I'm going to come in first with my light stain. It is similar to my background color and I'm going to offload a little and I'm going to very lightly push and pull on this project so that I am starting to cover the background. And I'm doing it very light on purpose. I do not want full coverage like we would typically do with a base coat. And the more paint that you get on your foam brush, the more coverage you will start to get. You can continue to use the same one, or if you feel like it's getting too much coverage, you can always switch to a dry one. So we're just doing nice streaks. This surface is a little big for me, so I'm going to turn it around to get this left side and just continue my streaks. I don't want a lot of areas to be the same. So since I have a chunk here, I do not want a chunk in that area again. Maybe here's a good place for a thick band. And then 
we're just kind of filling in where we don't have paint. And then depending on how heavy or light handed you are, you might notice that if I pull it this way, it gets a larger area if I push it. So this might vary depending on how you paint. Okay, so I have my first layer done and I am happy with that. Now I'm going to go into my next color of stain, which is my darker stain. I'm going to stay with the same brush to start. And then I'm going to go in the areas that don't have as much paint and do my second layer. So the areas that are really covered, I'm going to try to avoid those and sort of paint a like a faux stripe. And the reason that I did it on a round for this was because a lot of times when you're on a round, you find yourself curving around to get the shape. You'll want to make sure that you are still painting in an up and down, or I, you might be a left to right painter. I like painting up and down because I have more movement with my arm. So we're just gonna come through here. Now, one thing you want to keep your eye on is that you don't want your background to get too wet. If your background gets wet, the paint colors will start to blend into each other, and that's what we call getting muddy, so that it looks more like a base coat rather than a streaky antique distress look. So when you wanna see how it looks, we always recommend stepping back, maybe squinting your eyes, see if there's any big holes. I'm gonna feather this in a little bit. So what feathering will do is it will help dry your paint by pulling it out and then it covers up some of that open space. So now I'm gonna set this brush to the side and I'm going to grab another foam brush and the next color that I'm going to come in with is my cream. I'm gonna offload again and I am just very lightly sweeping my hand and the cream is going to add a little bit of depth for you. So one thing you might run into when you start is if you pull really hard, you might find a really bold, bright area. And that's okay because you can either feather it out, you can take a sanding block to it, you can layer colors on top of it. But if you find yourself with a big blob stripe because you push too hard, that's where you might run into wanting to go ahead and grab a sanding block I'm going to recommend using a really rough, low grit sanding block so that you can get in and dig into it, bring it back just a little bit, and then we can feather right on top of it and we can hide it. And then next time I go into one of my browns, I will do the same thing and focus on that area. So this is just a layers game. We are continuing just to fill in spots and we will just continue to do these layers until we are happy with the coverage. So on my original surface, there are still some spots of the original MDF that are not covered, but there are so many colors and so many layers that you don't realize it's an empty surface that it just looks like it's another color of brown. So now I'm going to go into my brown and I'm going to dirty brush here. So what this will do is it will give me another color. It's not going to be the dark color. It's going to be a mix of the brown and white. So I'll do the, the brown here mixed and then I'll go into it with a brush of its own and get it a little bit darker, which just gives me an extra color. However, I'm gonna go ahead and get a new brush because looking at this, we're starting to get a lot of paint on the brush where I've went from one color to the next and it's starting to get more base coaty than streaky. So I'm gonna pop it in here. I'm gonna grab another one. This one has a really rough edge. This time I'm gonna come into the brown by itself 
and just continue my streak process. This isn't one that's very bold, so we're not seeing a whole lot of color, but it is covering up that background for us. And it's giving us just an extra layer of dimension with our color. And it's not a color that I particularly am loving mixed with the rest. So I'm going to, I think, be done with this color here. It's adding a little bit more green than brown. I'm gonna pop this in and I'm gonna see if there's another brown color that I like a little bit better for this project. Maybe let's come into a 17. You can also add a black for this if you want to get a little bit of a darker color and we might do that down the road once we see how this is panning out. There we go. That's just filling in a little bit better, staying within the same color palette. We do have some dark areas there. So my favorite color here that I wanna kind of make the star of the show is gonna be this caramel looking stain. It really adds pop that you can see in the original project and it just stands out a little bit. So that's one that I'm going to want to come back to soon and focus on. Now one thing you will notice if you touch your board, since we're going back and forth through so many colors, is that it's a little bit cool and it's a little bit wet. So you might run into finding that your paint colors start to mold and muddy together. If that's the case, go to your blow dryer, take a little break, and let the paint dry so that it is more of layers rather than blending together. And if you are someone who likes to do projects the same over and over, this may not be the background for you because this is going to look different every single time you do it. All right, I'm getting a little muddy here, so I'm going to go into my blow dryer, I'm going to dry this up, and then I'm gonna put both of my brushes in the bucket and start with new brushes with the next layer. So I'm grabbing a new brush. Once again, I wanna focus on the fact that we are not base coating here. We are doing a really light pull and push to continue to get that streaky effect. And I noticed that there are a few places on my board that have pretty dark areas. So here's one, there's a couple over here, and they do not have that streak look, they have just a base coat look. So as I grab different colors, I'm going to go into my cream here and try to separate this a little bit and go into some of those darker areas and lighten them up with this brush. So when do you reload? That's a question about this project. You are going to work your brush dry. So I'm going to go back and forth until I'm not seeing any paint. Once I stop seeing paint, that's when I know to add more paint on there. When you get to the load of your brush that you have a little bit of paint, that's when those nice big chunky streaks come in. And so I'm going to do it until I see absolutely nothing else. And then I'm going to get more because I think the magic of this happens when there's not a lot of paint on the brush and you're just getting really minimal coverage. This is a background that you will probably want to go ahead and set out your stencils on top of it to see where your stencils are going to line up because like with this one, if I'm going to have my trees and have my country roads, I'm going to pick the area that I like the best of my background and make that the top because my country roads will be over top of it, but you're still going to see it. Maybe if there's an area that I don't like as much, I'm gonna put my layered trees over top of it. And I feel like I'm kind of, there's, a, there's kind of a lot of stop points here. So I'm going to go into my sanding block and I'm going to start sanding back some of those areas. So one way to prevent getting those hard lines is to come into your paint, start at the top and pull all the way down or start at the bottom and go all the way up. It is 
harder to get that start and stop of you want a little bit of cream right in the middle by doing that. However, if the lines bother you in the middle or if you the hard stop spot bothers you, that's one way to get rid of it. Or you can just get into another color and feather over top of it. If the dark color is the one that is really stepping out, then I can go on top of it with a lighter and kind of hide it. This is going to be a project that is going to be personal preference. If you are happy with it, you can stop at any point. If you think you want to keep going, you can keep going. I just told Steve I could probably do this all day and find different places that I want to add or I want to change. We have our different pops of colors. I'm gonna go in one more time to this light color since I want that one to be the star of the show and I'm going to come over here, make sure that that one is standing out and is popping. All right, we are happy with this background. We are ready for it to be painted over at any time. Go grab a surface and start to play with your paints. Backgrounds are the base to every single one of your projects. They can be bold and basic and beautiful, or they can be really intricate and gritty and rusty, and they really change the look of your project. So if you love this project and you wanna see more backgrounds, of course we have a playlist for that. Check it out, subscribe to Studio R12 Stencils, and ring the bell so you can be notified anytime we add new videos.